hello. Uh, it's another in expert interview with Samantha at Labrakita Marketing again. Uh, I'm here speaking to Danny Tangwai, who is, I hope I pronounced your surname right, by the way. Yes, you did. <laughs> Excellent. Good, good start. Um, so uh, you work at uh, Uwelix for in the marketing department, don't you? That's correct. Okay, and today we're talking about how you grow a new brand. Um, most cases, people are building a new brand because they are starting a new company, but this was a bit different in your case, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Absolutely, yes. We were in, um, in 2018, we were purchased by a, um, a company and we changed name a year later. Um, so we had to basically go to the market and introduce them to um, the brand Evelix, um, new name, new colors, new corporate identity. So that was um, interesting to do because we were coming from a company that was very well known in the market. And so we basically had to go to the market, introducing ourselves, saying, hey, we're still the same company. We're still the same people, same manufacturing, same products. We just have a new name. Um, so there was a lot of um, you know, work to be done to remind people that we were the same, but we had a new name. And so they had to get used to our new identity. Yeah. And I think I think that's that's much harder than when you're you're starting from scratch. Yeah. You, you kind of expect to have to teach people the new name. You don't right. but when you've got existing customers, you've got a lot of brand equity already, it must it must have been quite a difficult struggle. Yes, it was it was a, I mean in some in some markets it was a little easier than others. Um, you know, we sell through OEM channels and we sell through distribution and the distribution is where the mark, the older brand was very well established. And so we had to do quite a bit of work to remind them that, you know, we changed name. And uh, and so that was that was interesting. You know, we had to really educate our our distributors to sort of, you know, we had, there, there was a lot of change, you know, everything changed, the boxes changed, the product changed, uh, not the product, but the product packaging, Yeah, everything was different. So we had to really um, do a lot of communication uh, to preemptively tell them what was going to happen. So there was a lot of, this is coming so that they wouldn't be surprised when the next shipment comes in and the boxes are different, the name is different, the color is different, and they're you know, we didn't want to be surprised and think, you know, what is this? This is not what I ordered. So yeah. We did, yeah, exactly. So we did a lot of work with our distribution uh, channel to to really inform them. And, and we did a lot of stuff from, you know, um, email marketing. We did flyers. We did, you know, flyers that we sent to them and then we included them in the packaging to constantly remind them, hey, this is who we are now. Yeah, so it's a lot of work not to lose brand equity. I should probably explain at this point that we're talking about industrial business to business products. Yes, yes, we are an industrial, yeah, we are a, a global manufacturer of uh, electromechanical actuator and linear motion technology. So, yes, this is this is B2B um, industrial market for sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was uh, so it's a smaller range of products from what was originally part of a much larger company that had a wider range of products. Correct. Correct. Yes. This is a, a division of the older company that was, uh, that was sold. So yes, the, that's the other thing. The other company still exists and they still sell the other products. So the distributors still see that brand and they still see those products. Um, but our portion of the, of the product is with a new name and a new branding. So that was, um, I think that was also an additional challenge because it's not like the old brand disappeared from the market. Yeah. It's still a very well-known brand. It's a very, you know, very, especially in distribution. So we, we also had to make sure that we really communicated clearly because the other brand is still there. They still have it on the shelf. It's just that our products is no longer in that, in that yeah. bucket, so to speak. So, so I suppose um, that there are some negatives. There's some, some positives as well, in a way, because you're you own from an entire brand point of view. You can focus on those products, the types Correct. of customers that want those products, and your brand proposition. I imagine changed quite a bit because you were able to be more focused. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes. As far as the, uh, the the brand proposition, of course, yeah, we're marketing specific products, and the product range is is um, narrower, so to speak, compared to what the old brand was. Um, so, in a way, it, it's it's easier to focus because you have certain products, and and you definitely, you know, it's easier to focus. The and and with the with the OEMs, it was I think it, it was a little easier. Um, yeah. because, you know, they, they know the product that they want. And if they want our product, they, the, it's easier to, to, um, you know, switch them off, so to speak, and switch them over to the brand with distribution, because they also sell other brands. Um, it's a, you know, they have a lot more exposure to a lot more different company, many different companies. And so focusing on in that market is a little bit more, you know, it takes a little bit more effort and, and more communication. And, yeah. and, and so we also, um, we did we did some um, one of the things that we did was uh, distribution kits, so to speak, specifically in North America, um, and and those had a lot of um, you know it was a very nice box with our brand, and we had pens and notepads and and communication and a welcome letter. So that that the hope with that was that we continue to remind them who we are, and we give them material that they can keep on their desk that continuously reminds them of of the new brand. Yes. Which I think is a good thing to do for any brand anyway, constantly remind people that you exist because right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you want to be front and center. All front the and time. center, exactly, exactly. Especially when you're talking to customers that sell multiple brands, you really want to be front and center so that you can you continually remind them that you know you're there and these are your products and they should sell your products. <laughs> and presumably there was quite a lot of work which was even more difficult um, getting to the end users who buy via distribution because you don't necessarily have direct contact that, with them. Yes, yes. so that so we, we rely a lot on collaboration with the distribution. So when it comes to that, it's it's uh, it, it's more in the hands. It's you know a little bit more in the hands on our sales, our sales guys that work with the distributors to you know go in at the end user and collaborate with them to make sure that they select our products so of course everybody is a choice so so collaborations with uh, direct collaboration with the distributors and then having a presence there it, it makes a lot um, a lot of difference yeah yeah and one thing I imagine made a big difference is uh, I don't know whoever the design team were that created the logo and all that stuff. It's really distinctive and stands out. Yes, yes. Which I'll 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 link when I put this video out. I will put a link to to the website so you can go have a look. Yeah, great. <laughs> but it, it's you you need something when you're going out to market. You need something that really jumps out at you, and I think it does. Yes, and you know you, you they will see about our what our cor corporate colors are gray and yellow, and it's a pretty bright yellow. So, so we're uh, we're fairly visible, you know, when uh, when we're out in the market, even just because of that. Yeah, um, and the name is unique, so um, that that is a, a good thing and creates some challenges in, in Anglophone countries because it's, it's sometimes people are unsure how to pronounce the name of the yeah. company but that makes for good discussions you know yeah <laughs> yeah it's funny you know, enough it's like, the same thing with my company name and it's right exactly story. it makes for for some good conversations so it's a challenge and, a, and an interesting thing all at the same time yeah 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 so uh so yeah so that's um it was yeah I can imagine it's quite I mean obviously I've I've I'm a relatively new company I launched in 2019 so um I know some time. of those challenged I'm sure um but it's a bit different when presumably you already had quite a lot of sales expectations that you have yeah. to continue to meet having completely new brand Correct. Correct. Yes. Because the, the, yes, because coming from a company that, you know, already sold the products, it, it, the, 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 the sales targets increased, you know, from when we were the other brand. And so it's not that um, we had much lower sales targets just because we changed brand that that didn't change. So, so that was also part of the strategy where we, we did not want to interrupt the momentum of, of the sales cycle and the, the, the product sales that had to continue. Um, so we really had to be very proactive with um, the communication to the customers yeah. on all channels 
because we didn't want to have this break in the sales cycle where all of a sudden everybody's confused because one brand disappears, the other one didn't. So for a good amount of time, we always presented our new brand saying, you know, we used to be company XYZ because we, especially when it came to distribution, we needed to make that link. And, and that type yeah. of communication continued for a couple of years after because um, we, we just had to make sure that everybody was aware that we were the same company, you know, same people, same products. And so we often uh, linked the old company name for as long as we could. Of course, you know, you know how branding works. They'll allow you to use the older uh, name and material for a certain amount of time. So for the length of time that we had permission to use the old, uh, the old name and logo, we always connected it um, so that, that that transition continued to be um, a bit easier and you know it was a reminder of who we were and who we are now and it's it's been five years now four years now so at this point we we feel like we we still remind them occasionally but we feel like the the, the market knows who we are um, a lot more than obviously when we first started and I think there's a lot less less confusion in the market now right right so, so do you think um do you think it it was in your particular situation? I know this is unusual for people watching this, <laughs> may or may not end up in this situation at some point. Mergers and acquisitions do happen all the time. Do you do you feel that it's now easier for you to hit your targets to, to get out there in the market than it was being a small part of a much bigger brand? What what I think uh being a Smaller company, you know, relative term, we it, compare, but compared to the, 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 you know, the other brand that we were, we are uh, more flexible and we are more nimble in that sense. Um, and so from, from that perspective, yes, um, I think it's a little easier because we can move a little quicker and, and uh, we can do things a little bit more um, efficiently. Again, when you have a very well-known brand behind you, the branding portion is easier. And so yeah, yeah. The, the branding portion in this case is a little more challenging because we're a new company, so to speak. Um, so having a bigger brand and a more known brand behind you makes it easier because you walk into a customer, you walk into a consumer like, oh, I know who you are. Yes. Um, where with us, we're like, wait, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember who you are now. So um, from the branding perspective, I think it's a little more challenging because we're newer, but I think from the operational and, and sales, it's, it's a little bit easier because we are, even just from the marketing, it's a smaller group. So we, we collaborate very closely. Um, and so in that sense, it's easier to produce material because there's fewer of us. It's a lot more work because there's fewer of us but we can we can communicate quicker yeah. because there's few of us in in the department and you know and I, I i focus on north america but i also have a global role when it comes to distribution so i collaborate with my co-workers overseas very closely and that makes it easier because we are a much smaller team and so it's easier to get a hold of each other <laughs> yeah i can imagine I can yeah imagine. it's a lot easier so I think I think that brings us on to an important point because a lot of I, I speak to people who get bored of their own brand and they want to rebrand not really because that's the right thing to do for the market but because they just think it needs redoing and I think mm. it's important to say that that will make if you've built up brand awareness that is going to make your life more difficult I agree. Yes. I mean, rebranding just for the sake of rebranding, I don't think it's a good strategy. Yeah. Refreshing your brand yes. because you want to, you know, be more modern or, you know, even when it comes to uh, the graphics, when it comes to the typefaces and the colors, I think there is some, um, it makes sense to do it if your brand has been around for a long, a long time and you want to refresh it because you feel you're dated. That is, that's one thing. Rebranding yeah. completely, including changing the company name just for the sake of rebranding. I don't know if that's a, a good strategy, not to mention it's a lot of work and then you're going yeah. to go out to the market and you have to reintroduce yourself. And, yeah. and if you have a very well-known brand, um, I don't think that that would be a smart, a smart move. 
yeah yeah I, I completely like agree and I think I think a lot of people I think um uh, and I think people don't necessarily always understand exactly what brand is either it's it's, it's the core of who you are and what you mean to the customer and right. that maybe needs to re- be re-looked at every so often which then may have an impact on right graphics surrounding it you need to keep up to date with the market like the market's always changing yes I think COVID completely changed everything forever yes yes accelerated yes. change yeah. Yes, that, that, and that's true. And, 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 you know, I don't know, I had, my, my experience is, is strictly B2B industrial market. And I, I don't know if this is a, kind of an assumption on my part, but we, we change, I think that the industrial market changes a bit more slowly than a B2C type yeah, of Yeah, I agree, yeah. And so I, I don't think um, being in B2B, specifically in industrial market, I don't think brand, uh, you know, the branding evolves quite as quickly. Um, so for me, um, again, changing just for the sake of changing, I don't, I, I yeah. wouldn't do it personally. If you're a B2C, you know, product, maybe you need to change a little more often. You have to become more attractive to, and then it depends on your, on your target, right? If your target is much younger, all of a sudden, then yes, of course your branding has to change to match that. But in industrial things don't quite, they don't move quite as fast. Yeah. Yeah. The technology does, yeah. but, you know, that's different. You know, the technology yeah. certainly changes and, and you have to be, you know, able to move with the market with that. But the, the branding, I don't know if it's quite as as um, flexible or, you know, change. it doesn't change. No, as well. no, you're more like you might need to change the messaging slightly. Yeah. yeah. That's more likely than actually having to change right. anything about the brand itself. Right. And our message is different depending on industry. You know, yeah. we we have a product that fits in multiple industries and in and, and very different applications. So the product might be the same, but the message is different because the needs of that industry and that application is different. Yeah. So our messaging changes based on the industry that we focus on and we cater to them. Um, yeah. Even though the product might be the same, it's the message is completely different. Yes, yes. So one industry, their focus might be entirely on accuracy and precision. Right. And another might be all about energy saving. Yes. And, and another might do both about, things. But yeah, Exactly, exactly. So, you know, you need to know what the industry is focused on and what the and how the product fits their needs and how our product, you know, kind of helps them achieve their goals but their goals might be different depending yeah. on the industry that they're in. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you necessarily need to change your colours. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Just no. Yeah, yeah. No, we do, we do have, a, you know, just like most, I guess, most companies, we do have a corporate identity that we follow. So um, all, all our material is consistent across the industries, the, the, the markets. It, it just that it's the words change and yeah. the and the the text and the focus changes. But when it comes to the the broad uh, pieces of the branding, that doesn't change. Yeah. We especially being a new brand, we have to be very consistent with yeah. that. That's that's one thing that we really need to focus on is that we are consistent across the markets and the countries because of course we're global. And and so everywhere we are, we need to have the same image, you yeah. know with some flexibility but overall we have to be consistent and, and I, I think um it's important to mention here that is um I think a lot of people kind of dismiss that side of branding oh it's just um uh you know it's, it's, it's just um I was, trying, I was trying to remember oh yeah brand police that's one of the things that used to be called brand yeah, police. The, the logo police yes <laughs> and yes. It, it is important because they it makes your brand more recognizable and, and one um in the we all know in the b2c world if you think of mcdonald's right you, you they can just use a part of their logo they well, have, everybody knows yeah they have a, a little tune if you hear you know that's mcdonald's everything right. about them they don't even have to have their full logo on everything correct but you know it's them yes and you have certain feelings about them. It might be positive, it might be negative. <laughs> right, fair enough. 
right but but for those that are i mean if it's negative you're never going to buy from them anyway so they don't really care <laughs> right so, exactly. but they have it has that sort of emotional connection right and i think that's true in b2b as well it, it might be might be very different emotions yes but we're talking about big purchases where in a lot of cases uh, if they, someone makes the wrong decision their job could literally be on the line especially if it's it's going into a bigger product so you mentioned oems um that's original equipment manufacturers just for anyone watching may uh, may not understand so that that's where um these products would be going into a big piece of machinery if, if they made the wrong decision and that made their whole piece of machinery bad <laughs> go right. wrong right right that there's big consequences of it and that and that and, and to your point i think i this is personal completely personal opinion but i think when when it comes to b2c um there are more emotional connections to a brand you know you either love it or hate it or you're indifferent but you you tend to have your loyalties to certain brands when it comes to industrial i think there is a little bit of that but i think it's less emotional it's more it's more of the um you know i know this brand has products that work well they're precise that the you know the engineering uh, department knows exactly what they're doing and they can help me solve the problem so i think the brand loyalty comes from that um yeah. and you're right the the whole brand police is often you we, you know, we talk to colleagues that they're like, oh, nobody's going to notice that. And we're like, well, yeah, they might not. But yes, they probably do. And, and the, the danger of being too lax is that then you start deviating so much from it because nobody notices, you know, in quotes. And, and then all of a sudden, a year down the road, you look at some of the material like, wow, well, this looks like a completely different company. I mean, it, yeah. we don't even look the same. And, and we don't want that. We obviously do not want that. While we are a smaller company and we, we, are, we allow for more flexibility, even in the creation of material, overall, we want to be the same company. We want to be, yeah. you know, we want to present ourselves to the market the same way. And we want to be able to, whatever you are in the world, you look at our name or our logo, like, oh, yeah, I know who they are. Um, instead of having somebody looking at some material they were like oh wait a minute i thought that was that company but it looks completely different yeah um so we the 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 role of the you know the policing is more for that than just being needlessly picky about something yeah yeah absolutely i mean yeah. yes the customer are not going to sit there and go hold on a second that's the dana when it should be helvetica whatever exactly. they're not going to notice that but subconsciously they do right it's right. all part of in the all combined is part of what they associate with that brand whether they know it exactly. or not exactly and you know again they might not notice the font difference but they, if if the you know if the layout is completely different if the colors are off if the the design is completely different from what the standard products are or the standard design are those are noticeable changes and, and people will notice and and then confusion starts yeah. Because then you don't know, you know, you're not sure if we it's really that company or not. And we definitely want to avoid that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially now you've done all this hard work to get this. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We've done a lot of hard work and people are going to start to recognize us as, as a brand. So we definitely, we definitely want to continue with that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so is there anything else you think people should be aware of if they have to rebrand? Um, things that you need to be aware of, um, be, you know, people will not know who you are. It, it is a given, especially in the beginning. And so you have to be, you really have to be patient in reminding them. And, and even though it's going to feel like you are reminding too much, you're not. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, and that's something that we all struggled with because sometimes we were in, you know, even preparing our communication, we're like, oh, God, you know, they know who we are now because we see it every day. And, yes. you know, as internal employees, we see it every day. We work with it every day. We leave and breathe the company name and branding. And so you, you catch yourself in, in, in some spots where you're like, oh gosh, I just told them, you know, they, for sure, they know who we are it will be you'd be surprised and um yeah. and I think sometimes over communicating is better than not not communicating enough um some people will be you know might look at your communication and say oh yeah 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 I know exactly who they are and some people are like oh right I forgot about that 
And so I'm always, uh, I'm always a fan of over communicate rather than not communicate and, and be patient and, and, and make sure that you're always, you know, be consistent, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Um, consistency. I think it's key when it comes to um, the design and the, um, and the colors. And even though it seems to, again, to people that are not in the marketing or design world, they're like, Oh, you're just being picky. We're not, <laughs> there's a reason behind it. And, uh, and so, and, and then be creative, find ways to put your brand out there. You know, sometimes we, we all get stuck in a, we've always done it this way kind of situation. And, and when you have a new brand, that's not necessarily useful. So try to do different things and try to go at the market in a different way that, that can be helpful and surprisingly helpful. Um, and make sure that your sales, you know, your sales force is really involved and they are very you know excited about the new material and yeah. that they use it um you know make sure that they know it's available they make sure they use it and again that's where over communicating sometimes comes in handy because you know we're all humans we forget um so i think really making sure that um the people that face the customer um uh, every day really embrace the brand yeah that's yeah, so on your, on your first point, it's quite funny. That's one of the things I always tell my clients. You will get bored of your brand and your messaging, et cetera, yeah. long Wait before your customers start remembering yeah. it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And that, and that, is, and that is true. That does happen because, again, you, you see it every day. They don't. Um, and so, yes, we all get bored of our own, you know, branding and designs way before the customer even and I don't think the customer ever gets bored. They don't. They don't even. <laughs> they don't have the connection that in, us internally have. But um, I think really consistency and and it's really key in that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because you're just one of many brands to them. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Especially if you are exactly. So if you are in one of those uh, unique markets where there's only five of you, then it's obviously <laughs> a lot easier to to be in front of your customers and they'll remember you a lot quicker than when you are one of many competitors. Um, that that it's even more complicated, obviously, because they are exposed to so many companies and they need to remember you. So yeah, and I, another really important point that you mentioned there is getting sales involved it, it, with with yeah. brand. When I'm working with a client um, on their brand, uh, not necessarily rebranding, but but on their brand, right. um, I, I try and get different people involved from different parts of the organizations and yes sales is key they're yeah. the ones talking to the customers directly at the end of the day they need to they need to be 100 on board and like you say excited about the message yes they need yes, to believe exactly. in it otherwise the customer never will <laughs> exactly exactly and you know in our case we have sales we have customer service we have engineers all those functions are customer facing and yeah. they talk to the customer every day and you absolutely have to make sure that they are on board um you know with the the name the color and whatever it is that you're doing they have to be aware of it first of all and they have to you know you have to make sure that they understand that and that they continue you know relaying the message the way you want it to be relayed yeah. because they are the ones that talk to the customers every day and I suppose the other direction as well is because they're talking to the customers every day they might be aware of things that are changing at the customers or things that customers are focused on that you might not be aware of that affects your communication then absolutely and that's where you know when you when you work on your material you know we always involve whether if it's not sale you know if it's a product we obviously need the product marketing person and the the engineers I mean that those are key key people that you need to be involved they need to be involved when you create the material because they again like you said they know what their customer challenges are yeah. and those challenges can be key when you're developing your message because yeah. you want to speak to your customers and you want to speak their language yes and so that is important and if you don't involve the people that are heavily involved with the customers you don't know that I don't speak to the customers directly necessarily. So I need either the engineers or the sales feedback because they know exactly what's going on in the customer's world and they can help me. Yes. 
you know, craft my message so that the customer reads it and they're like, oh, you know, yes, they understand where I'm coming from and they understand what I need. So yes. absolutely, you have to involve them. That's key. Yeah, that's great to hear. I think I think too, I think there are far too many marketers out there that don't talk to the rest of the organization. Or, yes, um, yeah. Especially sales. Sometimes they're oh, even like, they're the marketing, you're always fighting with each other. Absolutely. We still have that too here. <laughs> <laughs> that's always, that's, I, I don't think I think that's going to be one of those um, you know it's it's the the uh, the situation that it's the same in every company you know sales and market are always mud heads at one point uh, but but yeah but we do collaborate um, and that's actually what makes it easier being a smaller organization it's yeah, a lot easier true, to yeah. actually get the right people to work with you um, because you don't have to sift through you know hundreds of thousands of people so you know exactly who you need to talk to for the specific application or industry so yeah. that and, and those people are the ones that have the knowledge it's mm. it always surprises not surprises me but it amazes me that we have so much knowledge within the company yeah and and that is that knowledge is fundamental for us marketers because again I'm not I'm not the technical person I'm not an engineer I need them to explain to me how the product works and then I can work around that. Yeah. Um, so the 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 knowledge within the company, I think, is fundamental for the marketing department to be able to go to the market with the right message and the right offers. Yeah, for sure. yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. So some I've worked with some clients where you bring people together in the room and the business owner or manager is like, I didn't know that. See, exactly. Yeah, I didn't know how that worked. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I find myself in situations like that all the time. I was like, oh wow, I didn't know we could do that. <laughs> so, so that and that's uh, and that's important because you know if I didn't know, the customer might not know. Exactly. You know? And exactly. That's a good, you know, a good message to to bring out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. collaboration really um, goes a long way for sure. For sure. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for that. That was a, a lot of information for people to take in, I think. I think we got through quite a lot in quite a short time. Yes, we did. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I was uh, happy to uh, happy to speak with you for sure. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And like I said, I'll put the uh, the website out there. And uh, is there anything in particular that you'd like it, like me to mention to people? or link, send links to people? No, no, I mean, you can link to the website. Um, everybody can get a lot of information from there, who we are, what we do. Um, all our material is out there. There's a there's a media library section of the website where we post all our videos and brochures and, and all, all our um, marketing material there. So I think um, people can get a lot of information from, from our website. Yeah, and, and get ideas if, if, if you try yeah, and sure. understand how people put, you know, how a consistent brand looks and and something sure. distinctive give you a bit of an idea how it you know how how it's done well <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you for sure yeah but you know again i always um i like i always like to uh to see other people you know people's work and see what other companies do and it's uh, it's always uh, interesting and you can always learn something new you never know yeah absolutely Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank and you uh, so much. thank you everyone for watching. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye -bye.